first video in this series on the AA guide to buying an EV in Ireland. And we thought we'd start off with the basics. What is an electric vehicle? How do they work? How are they different from combustion engine cars like petrol or diesel? And all these different types of hybrids that are out there. What's the components inside them? Why would you buy one over the other? Well, that's what we're gonna start off with today. The basics, we're gonna look at an EV, what it is, just to give you a basic understanding as we go through the rest of the series and you try to figure out if an EV is for you and which one you should buy. Take a moment, enjoy the calm. You could be stuck on the N7 with two teething toddlers, but we don't do stress at the AA. We do roadside rescue and our trained mechanics fix eight out of 10 problems at the roadside. Buy online now at the AA.ie. Relax, yellow and black have got your back. A car is essentially just a box on wheels, isn't it? It's a way to get you from A to B. Now, some go there a little bit faster than others. Some go there in more comfort than others, and some there are bigger with more space for more people and more bags inside, but they all perform roughly the same function. And we've had them for well over 100 years now. Although in the last few years, we've really been hit hard and fast with battery electric vehicles, such as the one that we have here today. But let's just take a moment and chart what else is out there, all the way from the humble petrol and diesel that we've become used to over the last few decades, through hybrids, finally to talk in a lot more detail about electric cars like this one. We've had petrol and diesel cars around for decades now, more than a century really, and we're all very, very comfortable with how they work. So there's hundreds of thousands of explosions which drive pistons and move the car forward, create a tiny amount of electricity that will run the lights or the indicators or your electric seats and stuff like that. So we'll kind of move past those because we're all so familiar with them. And what we want to talk about is hybrids. Now we've divided them down into three main categories. So there's mild hybrids, we've got just standard hybrids, and then we've got plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. So let's look at those three and we'll start off with mild hybrids. Now essentially they don't really move the car, they just allow you to shut off the engine as you're coming up to traffic lights or as you're going down a hill or perhaps when you're just idling there at traffic lights waiting to move on, it can keep the engine switched off. Not much to say about those. So let's move on to what's a much more popular category in Ireland and that's just your standard hybrids. Now these cars, they have your petrol engine in them, sometimes diesel, but mostly petrol. They also have your fuel tank. And it's quite traditional in that sense. But you've also got a very small electric motor and a very small battery. Now, they have limitations. They do make your driving more efficient if you use them in the right way, but they do have some limitations as well. So for example, you can't choose to charge up that car. You can't plug it in and charge it off cheap electricity, be it at home or on the public network or anywhere. The energy in the battery only comes from when you burn fuel in the engine, accelerate up a hill, and then as you're coasting back down or you're coming up to traffic lights or you're easing off and braking, they'll recuperate a very small bit of energy. And they might then be able to drive you for two or three kilometers on the flat, as long as you're staying pretty, pretty slow, you know, around the speed of a cyclist. They kind of tend to struggle to get up steep hills and the engines will shut up, sorry, the electric motor can't keep up with it. So the petrol engine will have to kick in after about 30 or 40 kilometers an hour once you go faster than that. Then that leads us on to talk about plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, PHEVs or FEVs, you might've heard them been called before. So these have your petrol engine, your fuel tank, but they also have a decent sized motor and a decent sized battery. So these cars, you can plug them in, you can charge them up at home or on public network or places like that. The battery will typically get you, you know, a good 40, 50, maybe 60 kilometers of range before they completely deplete. And the motors are powerful enough to, to get you around. I mean, a big enough car with adults and bags in the back will still get up to motorway speeds and run for a while on battery power and that electric motor only. And then that leads us on to talk about the purpose of this whole series, and that's fully electric vehicles. So vehicles like this, they have no combustion engine inside them. The only way they get energy in them is by plugging them in and charging them up, and they only drive themselves forward using the electric motor. So it's time to get stuck into the details and figure out just what these things are, and tell you what you need to know about them if you are considering buying 
an EV. So with all cars really just been boxes on wheels that get us from A to B, what are the main differences between a petrol or diesel and an EV? So we could get into the weeds and go through the nitty gritty and come up with lots of differences, but essentially there are just two. So one is that your petrol or diesel has a fuel tank. That's where it gets its energy. This has got a whole load of batteries stuffed underneath. The second difference then is that this has an electric motor as opposed to a petrol or a diesel engine. This is where we charge up an EV and with a traditional petrol or diesel, that's where you would put the nozzle in and fill it up with petrol and diesel. But where does that energy go once it goes in through there? Well, in general, EVs have their batteries packs stored right down here at the bottom of the car, just underneath the seats and the footwell. So what you could actually think about is a skateboard. It's got four wheels out on either side and that platform in the middle is where all the batteries are housed. Now there's some subtle differences between other cars where they pack them under the seats a bit more, but in general, they're down there in a design that ro looks roughly like a skateboard. What drives the car forward is also quite different. So we know about petrol and diesel engines, thousands of explosions drive the car forward and so on, but these have electric motors that draw energy from the battery turns the wheels and gets the car accelerated up to speed. They're also incredibly robust. Now there's lots of ancillary things like wheel suspensions, um, things like that, that you do have to upkeep, but in general, there's just so little to do with them. It's a lot cheaper and easier to maintain. But they also have a party piece up their sleeve because in your traditional petrol diesel engine, about three quarters of the energy that's in that fuel tank just gets wasted by the engine and gets expressed out the exhaust pipe as waste heat and friction and things like that. These are a lot more efficient in that sense and will be give or take about three times more efficient. They can also harness energy of the moving car. So as you are going down a hill or coming up to traffic lights when you need to slow down, you don't have to use friction brakes to slow down a car like you would in a typical petrol or diesel. Instead, it harnesses that energy, slows down the car and puts it back into the battery for you to use later on. We could speak a lot about electric motors, batteries, the differences between all the different types of hybrids. And there's, there's a lot to talk about in there, a lot of terminology, but there's also some intangible parts to, to owning an EV and to driving an EV. And that's mainly got to do with what they're like to drive. So the best way to talk about those is just to go out for a spin now and kind of give you a guide around what some of those aspects are. One of the biggest differences that people notice when they drive an EV is how smooth that transition is between speeds. So not just the acceleration, but also the deceleration. So we're on a quieter road here at the moment. We're doing about 40 kilometers an hour. Now what I'm about to do is just take my foot off the accelerator to show you what regen braking is as we come up to this junction just here. So I'm doing 40 kilometers an hour, take my foot off now, 30, 20, 10, complete stop. I haven't touched the brake pedal at all. The car has used regen braking to slow me down. So I haven't had to transition over and feather between the brake pedal and the accelerator. It just happens. And then once we want to move on again, here we go. Now, not every electric car has one pedal driving, such as what I just showed you, but every EV will have regen braking where it will slow you down to pretty much walking pace without you even pressing the brake pedal. But here we are now, we're doing 60 kilometers an hour. If we want to accelerate quickly in a petrol or diesel car that has about 400 horsepower, you're more than likely going to hear a lot of noise, a lot of vibrations, a little bit of jerkiness as the car chooses the right gear or you put, you know, use the clutch to get into right gear. But with this one, there's nothing to it. So here we are at 60 and I'm going to accelerate moderately now. 70, 80, there we go. Speed limit already. There's no fuss, there's no drama. People who drive electric cars call that an effortless acceleration. Now for some people that has a, a downside as well. A lot of people love motorsports. They like to tinker with their own car. They like to upgrade the engine or, and for them, an electric car, an electric motor lacks a little bit of soul, they might say. And that's fair enough because they're so much quieter, they're so much smoother, it needs less input in many ways as a driver because I've no clutch or gearbox to, to manipulate. But I suspect that for a lot of people, just ease of use and smoothness will outweigh that lack of noise. We hope that you got a lot out of today's video. I hope that it gave you a really good grasp on what an electric vehicle is and how does that differ from the traditional petrol and diesel ones that we knew and the various types of hybrids that we have out there. 
Of course, this is just one of a whole series of videos on buying an EV in Ireland. So do check out those other videos on topics such as how to charge an EV, how much do they cost, uh, range, how far will an EV go. There's a whole host of information also on our website, theaa.ie. So please do go over there and check out.